Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today, Tuesday, October 16th, 2012. All the links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so check them out. Uh, JP Morgan chases debt collection agency's sleazy tactics to squeeze student debts debtors of their latest cash. It says here that their first, uh, the big banks create debt and then they get paid to collect it. So they may have cut back on its private student lending, but the mega bank is still making plenty of money on student debt. Goes on, it says, and the taxpayer money is paying for some of these uh, pretty abusive practices. Back in 2009, uh, this Jason Fagon of Philadelphia Magazine reported on a woman's experience with NCO as it tried to collect the 9000 that her husband at the time on active duty in Iraq owed for school. It goes, at the time, she was working for free as a student teacher and had $92 in her checking account and a daughter to care for. The NCO lady told Tara it was time for her to give up on her dream of being a teacher and get a paying job immediately. It goes on and says that they actually contacted her husband's commanding officer in Iraq and said that if she didn't pay the loan back, that her husband would be dishonorably discharged from the Army. It goes on and says in the past three years, there's been over a thousand complaints to the Better Business Bureau about abusive practices from the collection agency. It says here in Texas, the burger chain Whataburger sued a collection agency because of its uh, efforts towards one of its employees, saying that the calls to the employee's workplace amounted to a campaign of harassment against the uh, burger chain that is unreasonable and reckless. A Texas lawyer um, actually goes on and says that debt collectors regularly call debtors at work attempting to make people fear for their jobs. Then an interesting article, Banking Protest Mural Resembling Nazi Anti-Semitic Propaganda to be Removed from East End. And I'll just show you the picture right away. There it is. Um, this Osmal Hussein picture is defending the artwork which has been painted on his property. He describes uh, the wall as showing world leaders playing Monopoly on a table held up by taxpayers. Now the artist has been accused of anti-Semitism, a claim which he vehemently denies. But with the continued presence causing public tolerance to fray, it says council bosses have set a deadline for its removal because of public tolerance. Hmm. Local councilor and long-term president Peter Golds has urged the police to pursue the inflammatory artists under race hate laws. He said, when I saw the mural, I was shocked. It horribly similar to propaganda used by the Third Reich in Nazi Germany. It says the money hoarding and hook-nosed men is classic Nazi. On by saying it's seriously worrying in an area that is so culturally sensitive, i.e. they're Jewish. So if it's anybody that's not Jewish, like in New York, you can actually do it. So you can actually put something calling uh, Muslims savages and to support Israel, um, and that somehow is not uh, is not uh, hateful or anything. Whether inter whether intentional or otherwise, the images of bankers perpetuating anti-Semitic propaganda about conspiratorial Jewish domination of financial and political institutions, where freedom of expression runs the risk of inciting racial hatred, then it is the right then it is right that such expressions should be curtailed. And let's go see what's in the comments. Oh, sorry, we're unable to accept comments for legal reasons. So there you go, freedom of speech. Then we have this article came across today from the 16th uh, Mind Controllers chant anti-Semi to prevent thought crimes. It says here, I met a nice working Jewish guy while working or covering the Economic Democracy Conference in Wisconsin this weekend. And when he figured out that he was Kevin Barrett, the notorious 9-11 truth professor, he turned visibly pale. He said, are you really a Holocaust denier, he asked, his voice trembling. And this, of course, is why. Israeli regime orchestrated 9-11 tax. There is something else that is going on here that I can think is very significant and very serious. And that is, many of us in the United States have come to not to believe in the official version of what happened on 9-11. In fact, there are another element, or was another element, that was involved in 9-11 situation that has gotten a free pass, and that is the government of Israel. So when we go back, you see he says, I assured him that I have never denied any of the many holocaust and genocides. He soon explained that they became well-known critic of the official myth of 9-11, Someone with a lot of money and power launched a defamation campaign against him, inventing a false story uh, that this Mr. Barrett endorsed three Holocaust deniers, whom, uh, two of whom they had never heard of. So it was on uh, some obscure blog. It says here, I lost my whole extended family in the Holocaust. The guy uh, sputtered. I said I was sorry to hear that. But he didn't seem to understand that I had been defamed and that someone was trying to smear 9-11 truth people as Holocaust deniers in order to prevent people like him from looking into the the event. I patiently explained this to him. He still didn't get it. 
Deep inside of his brain, some emotional core had been permanently branded with an uh, indelible connection between 9-11 truth professor and Holocaust denier, and he couldn't get past it. Like a person given a powerful post-hypnotic suggestion, he was no longer able to think about the issue, can only feel wave after wave of anxiety. And those waves of anxiety washed away his capacity for independent critical thought. And I'll leave with this quote, slamming the Rothschild crime syndicate, Zionism, and or Rothschild Zionism is not racism, any more than slamming Don Corleone of Italiophobia or exposing the Assad crime family is Islamophobia. Blaming ordinary Jews like the guy I met at the conference for the actions of the Rothschilds would be stupid, bigoted, maybe racist, but I don't do that. Hardly anyone does, except for the paid Mossad shills doing their part to cover up the truth and protect the banksters by keeping alive the myth of widespread uh, pernicious anti-Semitism. Then here's an article from the 12th. An Elbert County man seeking millions for a terrorist comment is being called a terrorist worth $2.4 million. Well, his attorney thinks so. This is the amount that he's seeking. Um, it says here, the suit comes after the commissioner called Pippin a terrorist and tried to ban him from the county building. Goes on and says it's been a very emotional thing for him. He says, you've been accused of being a terrorist. Are you aware of that when it's set in? This is based off his acts, which was photographing security cameras at the county admission building in April as part of an open records request he was planning about the cost of the system. An employee saw him and ratted him out to the commissioners. It goes on and it says that um, they barred him from the building and it says that the back of his hair stood up when he saw the f uh, what he says was footage of Pippin casing the building for a possible attack. So the 55-year-old disabled military veteran has been a thorn in the country county's side with his constant open records request and felt Schnegel's bid for Schnegel or Schlegel for a protection order was retaliation against him for doing that. He said, I've been in seclusion pretty much since it happened. No activities with the government. There's a lot of fear factor. I'm careful about everything. And talking about the U.S. election here, America's shrinking attention span limits race to the latest bite-sized sound bits from October 14th. Remember, I was just uh, talking yesterday about how some of the alternative sites are talking about how, oh, you know, if Obama wins, um, you know, if Obama wins, there's going to be employees getting fired and if Obama uh, loses well then there's going to be race riots and there could be assassinations against Romney. I guess this is what he said Romney who believe that they are entitled to health care to food to housing to you name it that's an entitlement and the government should give it to them and they will vote for this president no matter what says the remark privately made by Mitt Romney that 47 percent of Americans don't pay taxes hurt him in the immediate uh, wake of becoming known but the public has already forgotten it it says but an impressions coming out of the new uh, two presidential debates will have far more influence on voting day I'm not sure about that. And he goes on there and he talks about how for 18 months it's gone on and on. Now the battle for the White House is shrinking to a pinhead just 180 minutes. And it talks about the debates, 90 minutes on Tuesday, 90 uh, next Monday. And it says 18 months versus 180 minutes. The difference rings hollow if not absurd. What really is the point of so epic of a campaign when the tipping point itself uh, lasts no longer than the average college exam? And what does that say about America's political attention span? He says that he likens the shrinking uh, retentiveness of the average American voter to that of a six-week-year-old puppy. And of course, this is complete social uh, engineering uh, on behalf of the elites. They've done this uh, by design for defense strategic security purposes uh, to keep people basically uh, mesmerized with entertainment and distraction so they're not focusing on real issues. And like we were just talking about with that guy with the 9-11, the professor, uh, Mr. Barrett, talking to uh, that individual, uh, you know, what? He said that he couldn't think, right? He couldn't hold an independent thought. So, <laughs> and the debates now more than ever are the puppy chow drama-coded kernels of confrontation in place of a far less palatable complexities of policy wonkdom says it's a perfect fit for emerging digital, digital uh, mediascape, which lives or dies by its ability to shape the story into bite-sized formats. It says not so perfect is for voters who should be basing their decisions on more than a single night's worth of news.
The average sound bite on American television, meanwhile, has fallen from 43 seconds in 1968 to 7 seconds today. Jesus wouldn't get 43 seconds if he came back today. He says, and it's just plain whack to expect anyone to say something profound about the world economy in that amount of time. Well, you have to be, right? That's my videos are designed that way so that people who don't have a long attention span um, can get their information as quickly as possible. And uh, like I was telling you just yesterday about uh, talking with family members about that show Revolution, um, about, you know, like kind of like a Jericho type show or Hunger Games. And, and I noticed that my mother and I, we didn't really, we couldn't keep up with it, you know, or just our, the way we think and everything, it's, it's just slower, you know what I mean? And my sister, she was just all, like, she was like, how come you guys don't get it? You, you know, there's some big plot point happened, and it just went right over our heads. <laughs> and she's like, what's the matter with you guys? They're like, it's too fast. I can't keep up. There's no, you know, I don't give a crap about these characters. They're just rushing it, you know? And that's how it is. You can, I was actually seeing the difference in how people's minds uh, have been shaped. A good example is what? As these drone strikes, U.S. military admits its Sunday airstrike killed three Afghan kids. Now, they always usually say, oh, they were militants, you know. Uh, when they kill uh, civilians over there, they'll say, oh, they were militants. See, th uh, killed in the attack. Well, they were children collecting firewood, and they just expect the American people to just forget about it. Well, eventually, uh, Press TV did not forget about it because Press TV themselves are on uh, their own little uh, defense. They're being attacked as if uh, basically because they pulled their satellite transmissions of Iranian TV in the European, by orders of the European Union. So it says here, grenade burns sleeping girl as SWAT team raids home. So it says here, the, this is the photo provided that shows the damage from a flash grenade to the bedroom of a West End home that was raided by the Billings Police Department's SWAT team. 12-year-old girl was burned when the grenade went off. But the uh, ends justified the means because what? Uh, they were there to execute a search warrant as a part of an ongoing narcotics investigation by a special investigation unit. It's kind of like Waco, right? They say that the little flashbang in that uh, actually started the fire. But the ends justify the means, right? They're religious zealots and stuff like that, and they're abusing kids, so we better go in there with tanks and helicopters and watch America uh, watch this and see this and, and, and really show them how unfree they really are. Slap in the face as the NYPD orders mom to pay for a police car after they killed her son. I covered this before about uh, this 27-year-old uh, killed by a uh, kill trying to outrun cops, but now the NYPD has sent a bill to his mother ordering her to pay for the damage that killed her son. This is the story. This says here that uh, it says after being struck by NYPD squad car that began chasing him as he swiped peaver stones. Stones, gardening stones. They want 710 clams for repairing the uh, Batmobile that's already uh, overpriced and stuff like that. I've already covered that. Uh, insure to women, pay to fix car that killed your mom. So a company sought $6,000 in vehicle repairs, then drops case. So it says here this Anna uh, was a cancer survivor, was walking to a bus stop when she was hit by a passing BMW. She died two hours later, and police didn't give the driver a citation, noting that Sedano hadn't been crossing at the crosswalk or stoplight. So this is kind of like the slimy, sleazy tactics of these debt collectors um, with a student debt. It says here, Sedano's daughter, Monica, attempted to sue the driver for negligence, but before she could take action, the driver's insurer, Pure, fired off a letter to her lawyer saying our investigation shows that your client was responsible for the accident we now look to your client's estate for payment of the damages to our policy holders vehicle so just like that phone bill right that uh, uh, million dollar whatever trillion dollar phone bill oh it, it was a mistake right so after the post contact of the insurance fraud fraud company it dropped the request saying that the letter runs counter to our position and shouldn't have been sent you have amtrak joining the police state it says, according to Homeland Security, the DHS has forged a new partnership with the Department of Transportation and Amtrak to battle trafficking of humans. God, the reasons they come up with, right? So it says here that uh, the Homeland Security is going to train 8,000 frontline transportation employees and Amtrak police department officers on how to recognize and report trafficking indicators and suspected traffickers. They will now examine passengers for the validity of their identification, their level of stress, how they interact, and their conversations. Sales of guns have spiked in 2011 in the county of Stockton that's actually going bankrupt. Police see an increase in gun permit applications. Kind of like after the Denver, Colorado shooting, they went up too. Cook County mauling violence tax on guns and ammunition to funnel money into the 
billion dollar uh, budget, right? So it's going to uh, pay off what the eugenics and the hospitals and the brainwashing uh, camps. So as the economy gets worse, like in Stockton, when people want to defend themselves, well, hey, you're going to have to pay a tax. The ends justify the means because they're committed to pursuing violence reduction in the city. And as military suicides rise, the focus is on vets with weapons. Hmm, dangerous. Thank you.